Today, we're doing recursion in Java to find the factorial of any number in the world. I had to do this in college, but I'm kind of recreating it for you guys to help you out. And if you're new here, my name is Alex. Welcome to my channel. On this channel, I make a Java tutorial just like this one every single week. So if you're new here and you might be interested in that, then please consider subscribing. So let's start this factorial recursion program by just making a new project. I'll just call it like recursion factorial. Hit finish. We'll open it up. And in source, we'll go to new class. We'll call it like um, factorial. Hit this public static void main checkbox and hit finish. So let's just recap what a factorial is. I'll just write a comment to organize our thoughts. It won't affect the program at all. A factorial is a number multiplied by each of its preceding numbers. So let's say if we had five factorial, um, the exclamation mark is a symbol for a factorial. Five factorial would be five times four times three times two times one, which would equal 120. This is just to get ideas of what our method should do. And it looks like all we have to do is multiply the preceding number. And it won't matter how big this number is, we're always gonna have to go one at a time and multiply that by the result of what was multiplied before. But let's start our recursive method and see what we can come up with. So to start our method, I'll just type public static void. Actually, I'll say public static int to return the resulting factorial number. And I'll call the method factorial. We want to be able to take the factorial of any number so a user should be able to input any number into our method. So we'll just take in an integer. That sounds pretty reasonable. So we'll type int, and I'll just call that integer n. And we'll do some curly braces to put all of our code. Right now, there's a red underline. Um, it's just complaining because it says, this method must return a result of type int. It just wants to make sure that we're actually returning the integer we say we are. So I'm just going to return 0 for now. I went over recursion before, so if you want to check out that video with very basic explanations and very simple recursion examples, then you can check that out on the screen now. Recursion is just a method called inside of itself. But if you call a method inside of itself, it'll repeat infinitely many times. And the computer might not be able to handle that. So the recursive method needs to know when to stop. And that's called a base case. So for a good recursive program, like what we're making today, all you need is the method to be called inside of itself. So we're gonna call factorial inside of itself in these curly braces, and we're gonna tell it when to stop. And that's gonna be when n hits one. So let's just get that out of the way first, the base case. Tell it when to stop. We already know that, we wanna stop at one. We're not sure how the rest is gonna work quite yet, but we know we want to stop at 1. So we'll just make our if statement inside of here by typing if. If n is equal to 1, this is how you compare integers with equals equal signs. If n is equal to 1, then we want to return something. We don't know what to return yet, but I'll just stick another one of these return statements inside. Otherwise, Let's do our recursion. Let's write the factorial code in here. And I'll stick this inside. So we have our base case. That's like the biggest, most important part of recursion. You have a base case. It knows when to stop so it doesn't freak out. Now to start thinking of how we can implement the factorial code, like what to do inside of here, let's go back and see what we can come up with. Well, the pattern here for a factorial is like we saw earlier. It goes down one each time. So we have our current number times our current number minus one times this current number minus one and so on. So each time it's n times n minus one. So that might be useful. Let's try returning n, which is our current number times n minus 1. I'll put those in parentheses. I'm kind of curious what will happen now since we're not done 
but I kind of just want to see what will happen. So I'll, I'll type 5 and save it and run it. Let's see what happens. Well, we've got to actually print out that result. I'll save it and run it. Looks like we get 20 because 5 comes in here. 5 is not 1. So we return 5 times 4. That's not very useful. We got one, we got one of them down, five times four, but we wanna keep going. This is where the recursion comes in. We wanna get five times four, times three, times two, times one. So this, this is five times four, times three, times two, times one. And this is the same as four factorial. So five factorial is five times four factorial. So we have to do that, five times four factorial. N times N minus one factorial. Let's save it and run it now. We get zero, that's interesting. And that's because on this base case, we're returning zero. So we multiply everything times zero. So that's why it's zero. We will actually wanna return one. The base case here is one, because each time we return, the return statement takes the integer and puts it back into the method call and then multiplies it together. So this has to be one. Our base case is one. So save it and run it. And now we get our factorial, which is really awesome. I'm just gonna write a print statement just to see how this works. And then I'm gonna put another print statement right here. Now I'm just gonna show you that we're just gonna be printing out the current value of n and then the formula version. And then we went, when we get to the base case, we're just printing out the same thing, but we know it's gonna be one. So I'll show you what those results are and I'll sort of walk through everything. Like we said before, five is this, or five factorial is the same as five times four factorial. When we call factorial five, it's not equal to one. So we print out factorial of five, our current n value is equal to five times four factorial. And that's what this return statement is, five times four factorial. But now the computer's gotta figure out what four factorial is. So it calls factorial four. Four is not one, so we print out four factorial four equals four times three factorial. The computer doesn't know what three factorial is, so it does it again. Factorial of three is three times factorial of two, Factorial of two is two times factorial of one, and we know that factorial of one is just one. And that's our base case. That's why we return one. So now the computer knows everything it needs, and it goes back up. So since factorial of one is one, we can replace this factorial of one with one. So factorial of two is two times one, which is two. We know factorial of two is two now, so factorial of three is three times two. Factorial of four is four times six, since we found out that factorial of three is three times two, which is six. And lastly, factorial of five is five times factorial of four, which is 24. So I hope this was clear. Let's just try another factorial example, like uh, say 10, 10 factorial, save and run it. And we get that calculated out to this big number right here. But it's just doing the exact same thing as what we described earlier. All the code is gonna be in a link in the description that goes to my GitHub, which will house all this code for you. Make your life a little easier, since you might have a little bit more understanding of how this works now. If this recursive factorial program helped you out, please leave a like. If you think this will help out a friend, you could help them out by sharing a link to this video. And as always, you could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. You've been a great viewer. Thank you for watching. Good luck in your classes. See you later.